Okay. Recording, recording. Okay, so this is a very... This is just a very casual... Normally, it's a casual yeah. discussion. <laughs> I feel like I left out the thing out to dry here. <laughs> so I'll, I'll open it up. I'll explain. I'll introduce our panel <laughs> that are Perfect. non-existent, and we'll go from there. And we're back between two eddies, and we're live here from Lauderdale Marine Center. And this is part of our series, Five O'Clock at LMC. And it is actually five o'clock. That's right. It is genuinely five o'clock. Today's panel has been a bit... Um, sketchy? Sketchy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> our topic today is what happens when you run aground. Uh, all the issues, which I assume are pretty detrimental. They are, very much so. And so our panelists have one by one <laughs> excused themselves, and the only man who's actually either been allowed to turn up or has got the balls to turn up is Captain Kelly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice mm -hmm. to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Wow. I know you from before. It's right. You're a long-term tenant here at LMC? Uh, long-term. Been coming here since the beginning. And uh, still come here, and we'll be back here in January for a refit, and happy to be here. And you live in Lauderdale, don't you? I'm from memory? Fort Lauderdale originally, yep. I'm one of the local boys in the you hood. You actually grew up in Fort Lauderdale? Yep. One of the few. Okay. I'm drinking. He's not. That's okay. It's okay. I got a cold. <laughs> he's all right. Not in, the, not in the mood today for drinking, but uh, happy to be here and happy to be part of this and uh, explain both sides of the coin. Um, so it is. There is. I mean, I'm not a captain. I've never personally ran a, ground, a boat aground, um, but it is a... It's, it's one of those... It's, it's what they call a faux pas or, a, you know, the silent uh, killer for your... your it, your career, you know, some people run aground, they instantly lose their job. You know, some people run aground, the owners understand that we're trying to get somewhere the owner wanted you to go. Uh, sometimes they run aground because the channel marker's not in the right place, you know, and they just, that's what the chart was telling them to go. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen it all. Um, uh, I started off in this industry at Cape Ann towing, uh, towing yachts for years, hearing the stories of captains, what happened, why we were towing them. You know, they'd limp into port, one engine, one wheel, one propeller, one rudder, whatever it was. <laughs> and we'd take them up the river, get them straightened out, bring them back down. We don't talk about it. Don't, don't, don't say names or tell you stories about who, what, where, and when. But, uh, you know, I've heard it all, you know, so it's not, it's not, not me making it up. You know, I've lived it. Um, I've, you know, yacht captain as well. Um, they say if you haven't been around, you haven't run aground. And if you have never left the dock, you've never touched bottom somewhere. And that's just the reality of our industry is that uh, we drive very large vessels in very small, beautiful places that bottom sw uh, shift, channel markers float out of place. Uh, hurricanes, you know, change the bottom, the kind of topography of the bottom of the sea. And um, it's the, the risk that we take as captains trying to keep our guests happy and, and entertained is by getting them as close to the beach as we can or in that hmm. beautiful cove. And once in a while, you touch make bottom. that mistake and you can touch bottom. And is this, is a, pro this is a problem probably most prevalent here, right? Because we've got a very shallow Well, waterway. you see it a lot. Uh, you know, South Florida is very shallow, you know. Uh, you know, the charts say there's a uh, mean low water of 12 feet throughout the intercoastal, and I would tell you there's a mean low water of probably about eight foot maintained out the intercoastal. Some places are deeper than others. Some places have been maintained. So the charts aren't 100 percent Well, yeah, they can't be 100% right, can they? Because it shifts. Shifts constantly Constantly. Down there. Um, you know, one good heavy storm, you know, even a tropical storm, will shift a channel where you'll go through it once and the next day it's not there anymore. And um, that's the risk you take as a captain. Uh, you know, you hope that you wouldn't have this issue, but it does turn into an issue over and over again. Um, now, you can't sink hitting bottom, can you? Because the boats now are well, compliant with... Well, you can, you can sink. I, I mean, you know, the Titanic couldn't sink either, but it did. You know, there's always a way and an option for something to happen. So I would never say you can't sink. The benefits are that you're already on the bottom. So you're not going to go that far, but you can right. flood the boat yeah, full of enough. water. You know, uh, it can happen. And and um, being with the tugboat company, you know, we've seen that happen. Um, you know, some people run aground and tear propellers and shafts out of the bottom of boats. Because I would imagine that's the first thing that really gets. Well, the prop is usually off. the first thing that goes right away. Is the prop gets trashed, and usually, usually you're not going fast into a tight spot or a shallow spot, and you feel the prop touch and you stop. You know, you put the boat in neutral. Because yeah, this is the thing: is you normally. If you're in shallow water, you're going Super gingerly. Slow. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and uh, you know it's just one of those things that uh, it happens in the tenders. It happens in the big boat. You know, you hope to not be the big boat, more the tender, but it does happen. Is this why we don't see much sailing down here? 
Um, you do see quite a bit of sailing. Uh, we, obviously, we live in a an area where there's a lot of um, fancy marinas and, and stuff like that, so the sailboats don't go into those marinas because it costs more to stay there. Um, but you do see a lot of sailboats around, mostly in Miami, where there's more open bay sailing. You know, here you can't sail down the intercoastal. Yeah. So, um, but you know, the Bahamas, you know, that's where you see majority of people touching bottom. We call it touching bottom. It's where you just touch it and keep going. You didn't really kind of ruin anything. You just kind of spooked <laughs> yourself. Um, and that happens quite often. And, and, you know, that is running aground, but you're not stuck. You know, you've touched the bottom and you've kept going. Running aground, then, is very different to hitting ground at speed, isn't it? Because uh, there's, that, there's that Miami Dolphins player recently down in Miami. Hitting bottom at speed. Well, if you... That would be called parking the boat, where it comes to a screeching halt, and uh, there's no getting off it with the engines. You're just going to have to be towed off or, you know, salvaged out of there. Uh, and that's through a responsibility, I would have thought. That was somebody not paying attention, yeah. not watching a chart, um, you know, just kind of fooling around or, or, you know, probably drinking or carrying on. Um, most of the time in, in, um, in our line of work, we're constantly paying attention. We know we're there. You know, we know we're close. You know, and up at the yeah. shan shifted a little bit this time, and so you felt it drag the propeller, or touch a fin on the stabilizer, and you just keep going. You know, you just, you know, you got over it, okay, you just keep on moving, and you know, that's what the owner wanted. The owner's okay with it. You know, sometimes it's great, sometimes the owner's not okay with it, and they fire you on the spot. You know, and, and this is where I'd turn to Will if Will was here and say, right, when you do snap a prop or your misalignment, what's the recourse for getting it all fixed? Um, Cause that's, uh... I mean, you hope, okay, so if you just touch bottom, usually you can continue on without any recourse. If you park the bottom, you know, park it pretty good or, or bend a propeller over, then you have to make plans to have it fixed. Hopefully, it's can just you... the propeller, you know? And can you fix it in the water? There are options to fix it in the water, yes. Uh, the technology has come a long way. Now, is it feasible for our size vessels? Not so much, but the technology is there. They do it on submarines, they do it on cruise ships, uh, they do it on large tankers. Yeah. Submarines have to be tuned every time they come to port because of the harmonics of the propeller. Can't give off the wrong harmonic hum when it's running in silence. Which is uh, a huge problem I hear. Uh, it's a huge problem. I was huge. speaking to a guy who made a table, and the table hummed at a certain speed mm -hmm. of the boat. And so they had to completely remake the table. Yeah, to... they, could have, they could have rebalanced the wheels on the boat. It would have changed that. Rebalancing the wheels on the boat. Yep. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's now making me, you know, Costa, is it Costa Concordia? The one that... Yep. That was another instance of running around. That was parking it on the bottom. That was that, parking it. That's tearing a hole in the bottom of the boat and losing the whole vessel. That's a that's a serious salvage incident. You know. And these are career defining moments for captains. That's aren't they, usually sometimes? career ending moments at that point. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately. So running around isn't a shameful thing. It's, it's not the end of the world. I mean, people do it. You know, and it's happened. It's not the. It's not a. It's not a. You know, a game ender. It's not going to ruin your reputation. Again, if you haven't been to the Bahamas, then you probably haven't touched bottom somewhere. There's always a spot in the Bahamas you'll yeah. find, in the, and it's either in the tenders, usually in the tenders where you find it. The big boats sit out in the deep water and they're fine. But it happens. It happens. It's not a. Uh, and this is the point of having a tender. That's right. That's yeah. right. You stay in the keep in the deep water and puts on in on the tender, and you you know, also check the water in there to make sure you can get there with the big boat. You know, that's another option. Hmm. So why is why is it a, you know, everyone's very a mum. That's an English phrase. Yep. Did you have yeah, I don't know. I know what that is. Um, the reason of that is, is they're, uh, affected. they're, they're worried that they're going to come here and say, well, I touched bottom one time. And then some will say, well, that makes your, you know, your boat's worthless because you hit bottom. It's a, it's a faux pas. You know, it's a, it makes it. Do you have you, to if, report it? There is no one to really report it. So you can report it to your flag state if you're a flag state certified or if you're Coast Guard certified <laughs> that you ran aground and had an issue and had to have the prop fixed. Um, but the smaller vessels aren't really certified or classed for that fact, and they don't require them to. No one, there's no one to, to report there's no to. There's no Carfax. There's no Carfax for boats yet. They're working on one, but there's not there yet. Wow. Yeah. You, huh. So, so you just admitted you ran your boat aground, and everybody wants to know. Well, how bad was it? What did you hit? You know, did you tear the prop off the bottom? Did you drag the shaft out of it? But the reality is, once you have it fixed, it's fixed. It's not. It's not like a car where it's bent. You know. It was hit bottom, it's fixed, it's back to alignment where it's supposed to be, and you're back So it's not way. like, um, it's like, not you know, you bend the frame on a car. It's and it's kind of ruined, off. yeah. It's not like that on boats. I mean, if you poke a hole in the bottom of the boat, it's right off, you know, because you probably flooded the boat full of water. Yeah. But uh, people, most people are going to know about that, you know. But if you just touch bottom somewhere and you have to fix, you know, tune the prop back up, it's not the end of the world. 
You know, it's really not, and it happens more often than people think. They may not admit to it, but it does happen. You know, yeah. it's just one of those things. You could be going across the Gulf Stream and smack a coconut with your prop at 12, 15 knots. Your prop's out of whack. You have to have it tuned. I always thought that was strange. You know, you because I used to go on the fast boats down to um, Key West, mm -hmm. and you go 100 miles an hour, and if you hit something, yeah, you got to put a new prop on that boat. But the likelihood of that is happening is usually so very slim, right? Yeah. The, water, the boat's creating a, a surface effects on the water that pushes the water away from the boat, and that usually drives debris away. But there is that chance that you can hmm. smack a piece of plywood, two by four, you know, a crate. You ever seen a shipping container out there? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty spooky. Makes you really wonder How high do they sit? Not very high. So it's really just... Yeah, if it's calm, you don't see them. If it's rough, they're kind of bobbing. You know, they come out of the water and back wow. down. Wow. It's a real spooky thing. So this is really more of a general topic of what you can hit <laughs> with it these really floating is. I mean, things. You know, the other thing is you can go down the same channel a hundred times. You can be doing the same channel for 20 years. And what you didn't realize is the coral under the channel is growing at an exponential rate. And it comes up to the point where now you go through there, low tide, and you've touched it. And people are like, oh, no, there's no such thing. Well, there's actually a study with the United States Navy where a submarine was going through an area that was charted out that it could safely go through, and it smacked right into a coral head. And corals? Grows fast. In certain areas, it grows and quick. Dense. Yeah, so it, it will rip fiberglass. It will rip. It'll rip. It'll, you know, usually, if you just, hopefully, you just touch it with your prop, you know. But, uh, yes, you could poke a hole in the bottom of the boat, for sure. Yeah. Blimey. So what, come on then. No, no names. What was the back in the back in your towing days? Because you've really gone through your life. Has been. I remember you saying you're very proud to be where um, you are now. Well, I, yeah, I started off on the Jungle Queen. You know, working on the tour boats. <laughs> uh, you've for, really earned your stripes. Oh yeah. Uh, learned how to drive boats there. Went to Cape Ann towing. You know, as a kid in high school, worked as much as I could to get my being allowed to drive the big tugs, you know, tow the big yachts and right. did all that. So I did all the grounders on the sandbar out here in Fort Lauderdale or, you know, when someone would have an in engine issue, I'd go tow them around a the little single tug, you know. Um, but, you know, I've seen it, seen a lot and there's not much that surprises me. So when people are, are not comfortable with sitting here and talking about running the grounds because they're just, they just haven't been around, you know, yeah. they just haven't done it, you know, and, uh, um, and people do touch bottom. It's not a, it's not an unheard of thing. Like I said before in the beginning, any senior captain that you sit down with, anybody who's been around this industry for 20 years, they will tell you, if you haven't touched the bottom, you just haven't left the dock. Yeah. Because there's always gonna be that one incident where you try to stick your nose in a spot to turn around and the nose touches bottom. Or the, you know, the stabilizer fin catches on a channel on the way in. It's always, especially in the Bahamas, especially with the hurricane seasons going by, the, the channels are constantly changing. Who monitors the channels? In the Bahamas? No one. They, they say they do, but they don't really. So all these charts, are they like, are they controlled no, from there's, satellite? No, there's, there are, there are a couple people that actually go out and, and ping, ping the channels, yep. And they don't do it frequently enough to keep it really sharp, but you know, you're kind of working on there. Yeah, and you're there. saying channel markers move. Channel markers move, the ones that float will move around. You know, the, the base will slide around on heavy storms. God, I was out on the other uh, the other day in Miami with um, some Italian guys, and now I know why they were so nervous. Because they um, haven't, they didn't know the waters. Well, they're not. They're, they're, uh, the people from Europe are nervous because the water here is so shallow, and in Europe everything's so deep. Yeah, you get out of the harbor and it's yeah, a cliff. straight down. So yeah. here it's really shallow, and and they're like, you know, I mean, I, I went to the boat show one year on a boat uh, with the captain because he was nervous of the intercoastal, and I took it down there for him and took it to the show, and we had less than a half a foot under the keel the whole way down. Half and a he foot. Half a foot. Six inches. Yep, the whole way down. And the queue was the lowest point. And um, this guy was terrified. And I was like, it's fine, plenty of water. You know, <laughs> it was in the dinner boat, so that's all we ever did was cruise around that shallow water. So, you know, you know what's there but from experience, right? But, you know, I tell people, if you haven't been to the Bahamas recently and you're going over and we've had those big hurricanes go through, maybe it's time for you to reach out to a friend and see who's been there and get some advice, you know, ask what the channels are doing. Yeah. You know, because... At one time, you take the, oh, yeah, that channel's been that way for 20 years. You, you'll, nope. be, you'll be sitting right here going, well, I ran aground one time. <laughs> you know, or you'll be calling Cape Ann Towing or whoever and tow me back up the river. Uh, there's a boat down in Miami at the moment that's turtled. Really? And it's just sat there in the bay. Now, there's, this happens a couple of times since I've lived there over the last five years, and it just seems to be at left for a, sometimes a month. Mm -hmm. And is that because there's arguments over who should go and Usually those boats don't have insurance. Yep. So because they don't have insurance, who's going to write that check to have it flipped over? You know, that's the biggest 
biggest problem, right? And at that point, the guy who could barely afford the boat had it on anchor for free, blah, yep. blah, 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 is now completely at loss, and the city has to pay for it to be flipped over and towed away and salvaged. And it's not a cheap experience, is it? No, no. But they, by the time they decide to pull that trigger, they've made a deal with somebody for a cheap flip over mm -hmm. or removal, you know, they call it a removal, and they just tow the boat out of there and flip it over, and that's it. Okay, so what's the worst thing that you can do to a boat? Sink it. Good, yeah, okay, right, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> that's the worst thing you can do to a boat. <laughs> but it's very difficult to sink one of these things, isn't it? Um, that Turk it, Project, Can, Project you, Stan Turquoise one, that... Uh, oh, the one in Europe that was on the side? Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird, that was a weird deal, you know? It's unusual for that size vessel, for sure. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there's so I remember the... Um, but I'll go back to the Titanic. I well, go back to the Costa Concordia. Yeah. Those things are built with watertight bulkheads and automatic closing doors, and still today. So I insane. was told that, was it Lloyd started because of, no, not Lloyd's, because of Titanic? MCA started because of Titanic? Uh, it could be MCA, yeah. So after that, they, no, 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 oh, God, I'm trying to remember now, because we went to Lloyd's a couple of weeks, uh, about a couple of months ago. Lloyd's got, is an insurance company and, and a class, right? So they're. Yeah, the class. Lloyd's class, yeah. Um, could be Lloyd's, yeah. Yeah, no. Lloyd's. It's fascinating. Titanic really Solus. set a mark. Solus. Solus, that's what it from was. Titanic, yes. Yeah. It was amazing that, and I speak to a lot of lawyers, and they say all these thing, bad things that happen, they just make the industry better. Yeah, that's right. And so, Titanic running aground, well, was that, a, that no, wasn't a ground, no. was it? That was just striking an object at striking sea. Striking an object at mm -hmm. sea, a coconut. Um, a very large, wet coconut, yes. <laughs> Maybe cold made everything better. That's right. And so actually sharing stories of this is actually... Well, it... it, it doing God's work. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. No, it's not that anybody wants to live it. Nobody wants to run aground. I mean, nobody wants to touch bottom. No. And it's an unfortunate thing that happens in everybody's life in our industry. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's that one or two percent that never touched bottom and have been around the world. And God bless them. They've been, they've been, you know, taking good care of their guardian angel, not, you know, pouring them into a <laughs> bottle at the bar. But the reality is, is that eventually somebody in our industry who's been around long enough driving boats will have touched bottom somewhere. Right. And it's just the reality of it. And it could be any, it could be a numerous variety of things. You can go to the boat show and back into a slip and boom, oh, there's not enough water there for you. You know, it just happens. It just happens. Blimey, I can see how it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the persistent worry. It really is. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's always in the back of all of our minds. We don't want to run aground. You don't want to ruin a boss's trip. You don't want to have to have be towed up the river. You don't want to be hauled out the yard and have everybody go, oh, what happened to the props, you know? You don't want all those, have to answer all those questions, you know? But it's just, a, it's an unfortunate thing that happens in our industry and, and uh, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. And, you know, it, it's, um, it's part of our culture. It's part of our way of life of being a captain. Mm. You always have that option to just get out of the industry or you, you take that risk every day. Every time you leave the dock, you take a risk of numerous things that could happen to you, but you know, proper, um, being properly prepared for your journey, doing your charts, paying attention, asking questions before you go somewhere, will usually satisfy your need not to run around somewhere. <laughs> it's when you take the risk that's not written out in front of you and you try to be the superhero or you try to do something stupid is when the people touch bottom and they run aground somewhere, or you know, the owner says, I want to be in there, and you drive in there and wham, you run aground, or your anchor drags you in the middle of the night, you hit the beach, you know, there's all kinds of scenarios that can happen to put you on the bottom. But if you prepare and, and you're, you're smart about it and you, you know, read about how to make sure that everything's secured correctly, you won't have these issues. This is experience, isn't uh, it? Oh, definitely comes down to experience. Definitely comes down to experience. I was speaking to somebody actually earlier about um, interior crew getting a bit off subject, but an interior crew, they can escalate to Chief Stew within six months, which seems, Shockingly, which is yes. too, too short a period yes. to know the job properly. Is there a, like, I mean, it sounds like you pretty much understand a boat as well as you do your own sure. fingers. Yeah. Yeah. But is there a, like a, I know it's different for everyone, but is it like you shouldn't be a captain until five years experience or 5,000 nautical miles or, Oh, it's hard. It's hard. Okay, so... Because <clears throat> that 100-ton thing is just really a paperwork thing, isn't it? Well, you take a test, and you're supposed to have sea, supposed to have sea time for it. Same with the 200-ton MCA license, right? You're supposed to have sea time and go to sea on a boat and 
drove around on a boat, whatever. Uh, but, you know, it really is the person and how much they've learned or where they've come from that gives you that uh, experience, you know, and what to do. You know, I mean, I started off in the dinner boat world where we left the dock every day for four hours, the first trip, four hours, second trip, four hours, third trip. By the end of the day, I had 12 hours of running around on a boat, you know, by the end of the day, every single day. So my sea time, if you wrote it down per hour, is 10 times greater than a yacht that leaves the dock once every 30 days. Hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So your experience level comes in a faster, same level as the person who's been at sea for five years as the guy who's been on the dinner boat for a year because he's getting the everyday experience, the engine shutting down, the generator's not running, the sucking a bag, hitting bottom, hitting logs. What's the you know, sucking a bag? Sucking an air, a bag into your intake, shutting down your engines, you know, because they run on uh, raw water from the, from the water. Sucking a bag? Yeah, you put a bag on the bottom of the intake of the engine, it'll shut down. Like a polythene bag? Yep, yeah, it'll shut down the engine on the boat. What? Yeah. Just like a normal public shopping bag? Just a normal public bag. bag can do it, yeah. Can shut down an engine on a boat? It overheats it, yeah. Think about, look around the water, think about that. It's amazing, as I speak more and more to you captains, the, the job becomes so much more. It's so much greater, so you yeah. learn these, you learn these, how to get out of these situations at a younger age when you're working on a boat that leaves every single day, you know, tours, 500 guests a day on the boat, you know, it's a lot, you learn that. So how many did the Jungle Queen uh -oh, takes? 500 people, yeah. So you learn how to manipulate, how to handle, how to calm people, how to, you know, deal with medical situations, how to deal with the boat breaking down, you know, emergencies on board, emergencies on the water of other boats, you know. You learn all this stuff rapidly, where if you work on a yacht, you're the guy who washes the boat, you get that experience every 30 days. So the license is not any hmm. important, it's just how much experience you get with it. Once you have it, it's what makes you, you know, your level of experience work out better for you um, to be the captain of a vessel, right? So if you want to, you got your license and Three years later, you went to be a captain. Well, hopefully, you've got the experience behind it to do so. Um, hopefully. You can come on through. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, and, and that's per person, and I you know, I wouldn't take that from anybody. You know, there are people that have what I call hawse piped it, where you work from the bottom all the way up. And there's people that come in from the academies that are school kids that have worked at a higher level and gone, you know, just to be captains. Mm. And, um, you, know, you know, if you have the experience and you've, and you've done the work and you want to be the captain, great. But it's all fun and games until you have to do captain stuff. And that's where it gets real serious, you know, how to deal with the emergency situations, how to deal with the owner's wife who's not happy, how to deal with the, with the you know, the crew that are, you know, un, unhappy about the situation, what's going on. That's the part of the job that makes it, you know, trying and, and experience comes in effect. Well, this is what they say here. You're <laughs> not really a boat captain. You're the CEO of a company. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. You're doing the finance, you're doing the purchasing, the hiring, you're Driving the, firing. the boat 10% of the time. You know, the rest of it's all accounting, you know, crew management, HR, you know, healthcare. I mean, it's, it's you, in the last 15, 20 years, it has become a totally different world in our, in our yachting career. And um, here we are. Yeah. Here we are trying. And none of us captains have ever been to, I mean, not to say none of us, a lot of us captains have never been to school to be HR or been to school to be the healthcare guy. Or, Most captains didn't uh, even go finish high school. That's right. So yeah. That's right, you know. And you're expected and, to do these. And you're expected to be able to take care of all these situations. That's where your younger years experience, being trained under a senior captain that knows what he's doing, he's hopefully fed you the information you need to know to be a captain, right? Yeah. And um, there's a lot of guys out there that are, that are definitely ready to be captain, you know, and I wholeheartedly um, will push people that I work with to be the captain when I see that in their face. You know, they're ready to be the captain. It's like, dude, you're ready to be the captain. Go find a job. <laughs> you know, like, go be that guy, so. Yeah, blimey. Is that me That's me you? actually no. over there. Well, there's just one <laughs> final thing. With all, with, you know, things happening to a boat, that's what feeds yards like this. You don't come here to well, yeah, you come, sit around. You come, I mean, obviously the, the, the touch and goes, the, Running aground is not an everyday thing. You come here for your general maintenance, just you know, yeah. running around. You gotta have the shaft logs cleaned. You have to have the, you know, the rudders pulled out and the bearings changed. You know, you have the props tuned and the shafts tuned just from years of running around. I mean, that that is an everyday thing, and that's what feeds these yards is the constant maintenance of these vessels. The running aground thing is a bonus when you come here because everyone's like, well, look at all this extra work we get to do, you know. Mm. And that's you know, you come with a little bit of shame on your head and you show up and. <laughs> You get towed in by the tugboat, and you're just like, 
Yeah, yeah you're I like, got my stripes now. Yeah, you're like, oh boy, you know, and, and you want to be the captain? Well, here, now you got to stand up here and take it, you know, yeah. like the captain does. So, um, but you know, like I said, it, people run aground for various reasons. Engines shut down, boats stall, whatever, you know. Uh, if you suck up a bag and you start suck drifting. Up a bag and that's it, you start drifting and you hit the bottom and now your prop's bent and, you know, this happens in our industry and it's not, you know, obviously nobody wants to be on a boat and name the vessel they were on when it happened. Yep. Fair enough. I agree, you know, that doesn't need to be said, but it does happen. It, and, you know, people like to faux pas, it, you know, and as a captain of a yacht and as a captain of a tugboat company, you know, I've seen it on both sides. So, you know, I know where people come from and uh, it, it, it is what it is, you know. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time with us. You're welcome. I'm sorry the rest of the guys weren't able to yeah. to uh, partake about, uh, <laughs> I guess you have to have the, uh, the guts to stand here and take it, but uh, that's the reality of our industry, unfortunately. It's also, and it dawns on me every single time like we talk, I talk about a subject with people, you're dealing with multi-million dollar toys, mm -hmm. which, you know, anything you do say wrong has an effect. You know, you hire the wrong carpenter, you hire the wrong person, or you, you run aground or you do something irresponsible, it'll have an effect. And so the stakes are very high. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and again, like I said, you know, a lot of people find themselves touching bottom or running aground because the owner wanted them at that marina for this event. And you're like, well, we're, you know, just not enough water. And you find out the hard way. Yeah, I've you heard know. many stories where the owners are gone, there. get me. I want to be right there where everybody else is. Okay, you know, and you touch bottom. And you know, does it do any damage to the boat? Not always, you know, like I said, sometimes you just touch and you slide right off and off you go and everything's hunky-dory, no big deal. But sometimes you have to come back to the shipyard and have a mm. prop tuned or pay to have the big money to have it tuned in the water. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And it didn't rain. Not yet. It was really threatening. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Not yet. But you never, you never see. We'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. Maybe the rest of these guys will show up next time. <laughs> next time. I'm going to start doing my discussions much at the lower. So is there anything as you as a captain would like to discuss with other fellow <clears throat> uh, captains or crew or suppliers? Um, not, to not necessarily to resolve anything, but just to bash it out. I'd like to hear what people have to say about our, our younger generation coming in the, coming in the, the queue. Um, okay. The younger generation crew have a lot of expectations and a lot of um, their um, entitlement factor. Uh, You're saying that? Their entitlement factor is very high. Is this because of blow deck? <laughs>